After many incredible series, it is now time for the grand finals of the King of the Beta Tournament. Half the players in the finals, many expected to be here. The other half, a dark horse. The man who's been in the beta for the longest amount of time battling away against the GSL Code S champion. It is now Morrow versus Pult. Day9 TV and TeamLiquid.net present the grand finals of the King of the Beta... Hots. Down on the bottom left from Team Western Wolves, one of the most prolific beta players and streamers, Tiz Morrow. And in the right position, a wee little GSL Code S champion, known for his extremely aggressive style, it is Pult. Now given the fact that I have done research, and by research I mean I watch a lot of StarCraft because, you know, well you know, Morrow is a player who does like mecking in all matchups. Pult, on the other hand, I would very much so expect him to stick with Marine Marauder, despite the fact that we are in the TVT matchup, where mech is generally considered by most to be the most reasonable matchup to go mech, unless you're goody. In which case, what do you mean? I, I just, I'm mecking. In this position, I really uh, do like the idea of going mech, given that it's a short distance out for Morrow, and he cuts this way. Short path in between the bases. It will protect his fourth base, no doubt protect his third, as the his whole army is in the way. And then he cuts right in here, in between Pult's natural and third base. So, mech play... Very reasonable. Marine Marauder, though, does have the edge of this big, wide-open space along the backside where medevac drops can pop in. Morrow, really excessive user of the sensor tower to spot all them things. And we see the usual deviations. Both players going for gas because, let's be honest, Widow Mines are totally awesome. It is interesting that in seeing a lot of the Korean players battle in the uh, Terran vs. Terran matchup, especially Marine King Prime, seeing how often the Hellbat drop vs. Hellbat drop scenario comes to light, but at this point in time, both players not going for any sort of fast tech. Both players doing the identical fast Reaper play. Pult does get the opportunity to spot here, and this is a really critical miss scout from Pult. Very clear the opponent is doing some sort of tech play. And Pult will not get to ever see either one. He's just going to see absolutely nothing in the back corner. Could be fast Reaper. Could be fast tech. Pult throwing down his expand. Then it looks like somehow Morrow is behind in the expanding front. There, Morrow throwing down his expand. So both players playing very similarly. The nice thing about Reaper is it allows you to transition into Mech and Marine Marauder both very appropriately, so... Ooh. Somehow one Reaper beats one Reaper, one controlled very exactingly, so Morrow will be forcing that one back. Both players going for the factory with Reactor, but will the Reactor come up for Pult? I think we may finally see a little bit of variation in these two players' play as the uh, Reaper for Pult just holds that Watchtower. Ah, interesting. Not going to really see any attempt from Morrow to begin the tech up the tech ladder, as though it looks like Pult will be going straight for that starport. Reaper is going to pop up the two Marines. Uh-oh, dealing some of that critical damage. Pult does get the scout. Pult does see the expansion command center is up. And now it's time for Morrow to do the exact same thing. He really wants to make sure that there is that expo coming up. He may very well get a clean spot on that starport. Popping in, sees the sees it. Will likely get a kill on this SCV at the expense of the Reaper. Ooh! Getting out! Freaking me out. Taking it down. Morrow going for a more classic expand into Hellion play, Pult going into the mines, and then into the starport. Will he go straight for the medevac? Will he go for the viking? Is a little bit of a defensive play. There's the defensive viking. Now that the factory is up, we see if there's 50 gas. We can begin making more mines, and he does. Third command center coming down from Morrow. Looks like he thinks that this might be Terran versus Zerg. L-O-L-O-L. -L -L -L. And indeed, Marine Marauder Medevac.
Now in this position, uh, Polt is going to be as lean as possible with his build. Did a really cute thing where if you look, no Vikings out, he let the Viking get close to completion before canceling it. Just to be sure. One Hellion falls to a Widow Mine at the front before getting up into the main base. This Reaper will likely get out again. Is this one Hellion? Starting to do a little bit of cooking damage. Morrow being very careful not to have that walk into range of a mine. But he does. Continued Hellion production. Morrow does have the advantage of being able to transform those into Hellbats later on down the line to be able to absolutely rip apart those worker lines. But right now, I would say that Polt has a little bit of the edge in terms of his infrastructure. The units lost. Has not really lost that many of uh, the Hellions. Mm, Viking almost out. Where is that medevac going to go? The real thing for Polt is he needs to keep the positional aggression on. He needs to make sure that there's no opportunities. <sighs> Takes out one mine. He needs to make sure that there's no opportunities for Morrow to begin stepping into the middle of the map, to begin sieging up those tanks. One of the great benefits of this Widow Mine medevac play is that with those emergency thrusters, it's very easy to get out of tight spots. Morrow's going to try to cut it off, do his best to cut it off, but in this spot, with Stim coming up, I mean, Polt, I think, does a nice identification seize. Uh-oh. Looks like the mine has been spotted. This is some really nice spotting right now by uh, Polt. Ooh. I didn't know you could do that. Oh, that's so cool, popping in and out. Polt has some weird expanding choices uh, to make. He wants to expand up to this top side. He has a little bit more free space to be able to defend this expansion. It's a little bit easier against the aggression that we've been seeing out of Morrow. With these two engineering bays beginning these upgrades, there's no real timing that you're looking for against a mecking player. Very often, you're just looking to take expands, judge when his units get out of position, and go for it. In that sense, starting these early upgrades is very important to make sure that whenever that engagement does happen, that you are in the lead, that you do have more hits that you can withstand, especially for your marines to stay alive. In the meantime, we're seeing uh, Maru just gently tech up, nothing extreme, but given that he wants to push up to his opponent, would still not be surprised to see a fast fourth at the center location. Marine Marauder Medivac from Pult does need to continue this tank production. It's very tempting to go pure Marine Marauder Medivac, as Marine King Prime does sometime, but the only way you can really do that is if the space between the bases is gigantic. So you can really keep that positional aggression going on. Right now, Polt moving into the middle of the map, just holding the Watchtower in a fairly standard way. And Morrow does have some options to be aggressive. He's getting the transformation servos to allow him to go into Hellbat mode, but there's some abilities to uh, do some drop aggression, see if Hellbats can poke in. The back of the main base not only has no turrets, but no watchtowers. There's actually no read from Pult that those sort of things would be coming in. So drop play could be very beneficial for Morrow, but he tends to be a very passive player tends to favor setting up his optimal set of units. And Polt, I think, very smartly, is already cutting to the left side. If a push comes in mid, he wants to be able to take it out immediately. One Siege Tank suggests that that might not be a wise option. Speed Medivac spots it all. Three Hellions moving out from Morrow to the top side. Now, in Morrow's shoes, the big goal is to get to 2-2. Two, two. You actually do have... Ooh, nothing's been started yet. The big goal is to get up a huge force. 2-2 two, two upgrades. Even 1-1 one, one decimates a Marine Marauder army if positioned well. Taking the fourth base would be enormous. But what you need to do in Morrow's shoes is just build up and make one huge, clean attack that's slow, deliberate, Doesn't walk into any traps. The tanks don't get on siege. And here it is starting up. Could very well take four minutes to get from here all the way over to Pult's natural expansion. 
But all that's okay. Tomorrow's taking this expansion. So far, so good. Just churning out tanks, Hellions, all the good stuff. Now, Polt, on the other hand, does want a second factory to be able to keep up in that tank production, but we don't actually see that quite yet. Wait, we do. Where is that second factory? Where? Let me cut. Oh, there it is. Oh, thank goodness. Because in this tab, we see that Morrow is leading in tanks, but he's not dominating. Eight to six. This gives Polt permission to do little counterattacks, even despite these close proximities. Two marine or two medevacs right here at Marine Marauder would be absolutely essential. Doing drops here, even doing drops here, or just waltzing right on by as the push gets aggressive. Polt starting to do the scan. These orbital commands normally used for SCV muling is not as important as the scan. Sensor towers getting set up for both players, so. Pretty basic at this point, but Polt really starting to exploit things right away. I know you have turrets. My medevacs are faster. Polt drops at the backside. He's going to try to crack this all at once with multiple drops in multiple locations, trying to find the weak points in Morrow's armor. And it looks like he has found plenty. Marine Marauder with that speed boost, the emergency thrusters, I mean... Spotting with the sensor tower. Coverage with the turrets and the Vikings. And this is a massacre. Oh my god, Polt just broke through that no problem. Marl's not even going to get himself established. 45 workers killed in a matter of seconds. I mean, Polt has essentially dealt one blow tomorrow and it might be, it might be critical damage. I feel like I'm watching Bushido Blade. Scan from Polt just to make sure that there's nothing else he can do. He even picks off the mine, but not before it unleashes a volley. He's going to load in. He's going to pull out. He's going to fly right into everything, but let's be honest. Polt is in control right now. Even the Hellbats looking weak in the face of the Marine Marauder pressure from Polt. Stepping up, he's forced to cancel on one, two, soon to be three command centers. Morrow trying to send some units to take it out. Absolutely not. The Marauder, the classic Polt unit. Not doing anything, losing turrets, sensor towers. And in the meantime, Polt, command centers, command centers, command centers, command centers. The tank count from Polt is getting ridiculous in itself. Morrow beginning to rebuild, but at the front he has exactly five tanks. Exactly six. <laughs> and it looks like Polt realizes that 14 is higher than 7, begins to step forward. A little bit of a sloppy initial engagement, but no big deal. The drops continue right on top of the missile turrets. Not a big deal. It's this tank marauder force that Morrow really has to worry about. The single scan demonstrates that there's a big weak spot. Marauders stepping in, and there is the hole. Polt steps in, sieges up. This is not going to last very long. There's the huge explosion of the front line of Morrow's units. And even though Polt has to pull back and reposition himself a little bit, he's going to be able to cut off reinforcements from the ramp. Polt needs to siege up. There's the good game, Polt! With a convincing game number one in the grand finals of the king of the beta. Leads the series 1-0 against Morrow's Mech. When we come back, it'll be game two because we believe that logic should prevail and that we should go in the series in order. But Morrow needs to have some way to step into gear and begin attacking because if he gives the free reins to Polt, he's going to lose to those continued drops that we see Polt unleashing all over the map. So stay tuned. Game number two coming up right now.